Hello, everyone. Um, let me introduce myself. Hi, I'm Roman, and I'm also a technical lead at Avito. And besides that, I'm working on several open source projects, and some of them are connected with CSS syntax. So actually, I'm working for, uh, with CSS for about 20 years, but um, yeah, and I thought that I know everything about it. But in the last two years, I know much more about its journals, and I want to share with you those findings that I learned in these years. So first chapter is about CSS syntax, syntax basics. So you should know that SSS document is a series of uh, rules and add rules. So first one is uh, actually apply uh, some styles to our elements, and second one is uh, some kind of instruction for CSS and uh, provide some values for CSS document. So uh, if you take a look uh, closer on a rule syntax, it's quite common for you. It's very simple. The same thing. Uh, is about etrul uh, syntax. So that's all basics. And why I'm talking about? So many developers think that CSS is quite simple because it's just two common uh, syntax rules, and that's all. But in fact, uh, CSS is not uh, so simple because too many uh, specs and rules exist. So uh, I, they defined uh, different parts of CSS. We need to uh, learn a lot of things to understand it correctly. And one of the main problems here is that uh, spec actually states something, usually, uh, but don't explain it. So here I am, and I want to talk you a few stories. And f first one is about white spaces. So you should be, uh, you should know that uh, most white spaces are optional in CSS. So this, uh, on this slide, you can see uh, the same CSS in different forms. First one uh, written in um, readable way, and second one in shorter way. So let's take a closer look at some parts. You know uh, we have a calc function in CSS, and we can use uh, white spaces around operators, but we also can remove some uh, white spaces around them, but not all of them. And uh, we can remove white spaces around a plus and a minus, so it's quite di different from uh, uh, other um, operates like slash and asterisk. And also, and selector uh, can uh, contain uh, M plus and M minus, but in this case, uh, white spaces are, op uh, are optional. So the same thing, but the different rule. What happened? We're looking in the future. <laughs> Uh, so I, uh, if you look at white spaces in general, most of them are optional, and you can remove all of them in some cases. So it may be uh, difficult to understand what's, what is go going on here. And to find uh, uh, the answers for it, for this question, we need to uh, learn some CSS internals. So it's another story inside this story, tokens. Um, Let's start from the beginning. Uh, usually we write some CSS, it's uh, actually some text, but if we look at programs, they uh, work with some abstractions. Usually it's objects and trees and so on. Uh, so kak, how we get uh, an, uh, objects from the text? Uh, in CSS, like in any other uh, languages, we have uh, several steps, several stages, when we uh, processing our input to get uh, some objects, or some meaning of this text. So most important part here is the tokenization step. Th on this step, we uh, get, uh, we build some sequences of characters, and as a result, we get a token stream. So tokens is just a sequence of characters that uh, use it as a bricks for our objects in future. There are 24 CSS tokens uh, that's not so many, don't worry. Let's take a, a closer look on some of them. For example, ident token, it's just identifier like in any other languages, but uh, specific for CSS, 
uh, identifiers in CSS can uh, contain a dash anywhere in uh, in identifier, <coughs> and also can start with single or double dash. Another token is also simple. It's a string token. It's just a piece of text surrounded by a quote, a quote or an apostrophe. And the number token is also easy. Uh, it represents just some number. Also, we have uh, a dozen of uh, token types that represent just single code points. So it's uh, actually a single character. So for example, colon token is just a colon. Comma token is just a comma. And one special uh, token type here is the lim token. It represent, uh, represents uh, any single code point that are not taken by another token. And one most interesting of token types, these four guys, uh, it's actually a pair of another tokens. So if we take uh, ident token and put it together with uh, open parenthesis, uh, we will get a uh, function token. The same thing for dimension, for example, it's uh, quite, uh, it's used very often. So it's just a number token with uh, ident token. It, and very important here that we can put a white space between a pair, because in this case we will get another meaning for our uh, input. And following that, we can uh, uh, state these simple rules for white space. So we can't use uh, a white space inside um, a pair uh, when we want to get a composited uh, token type. Um, uh, but in other cases, white spaces are optional. So we can use it or omit it. It's changed nothing. So let's back, uh, get back to our cases. You remember about calc functions, so we, we said that uh, white spaces around plus and minus uh, are required. So it, it, uh, it's required because in other uh, otherwise uh, it will produce um, another uh, token, token sequence. So in for example, this is an expression that consists of uh, of dimension and percentages and uh, an operator between them. So it's quite correct and what we expect. But if we remove a white space on the right side, we will get just two tokens. It's a dimension token and a percentages. Uh, the same thing if we remove white space on the left side, it will stick to uh, dimension. So we will get uh, two, uh, two tokens also. But uh, it not, it, it's incorrect um, expression. And if we entire uh, remove on, uh, white spaces on the both side, we will get a dimension and a person sign. So this, uh, you, you can see that it's very hard to explain when we can use white spaces or not. So the simple resolution here is, uh, is use uh, uh, white spaces every time when we use a, a, a minus and a, or a plus. And also it is a straightforward for future because in future uh, keywords can be introduced in calc function. So in this case, if we, we use something like that, the max content is a, a keyword, special keyword. Uh, so it's not clear here, it's a subtraction. So we, uh, it's a subtraction or just a keyword. So that's why this, uh, those uh, rules uh, exist. White spaces around plus and minus are required and are not required in any other case because slash and asterisk don't produce any composited token types. But uh, what about ends selector? Uh, actually, it's content described by special microsyntax, uh, call it a and plus, plus B. It's quite complicated. It, it's actually an exception of rules. Uh, and another Unicode range, microsyntax, also exists. So this uh, microsyntax is really rare uh, used. So you just know, should know about it. Uh, and this one, 
we remove uh, all white spaces in this case because solid key keyword don't, pr uh, don't produce any composited uh, tokens with closing parentheses and the hash. So we can remove it, it's changed nothing. But keep in mind that you uh, uh, can't uh, omit white spaces in any, uh, in any case. So in this case, if we remove white spaces in this value, so we get just one single token, dimension token, we speak solid red as a unit. So thinking in uh, terms of tokens um, make, uh, makes the rules uh, much clearer. And another example uh, about uh, custom properties. Many developers confused about this case. Why it doesn't work? Uh, it doesn't work because it actually the wire substitution work on token level, not on the, uh, the string level. So it's not a concatenation of uh, piece of text. It's a merge of uh, two uh, token sequences. So we'll get. Uh, sequence of two tokens, it's a number token and ident token, instead of dimension token that uh, width property expects in this case. A little summary here. Uh, everything happens for reason. Uh, and think about uh, CSS syntax in terms of tokens, make uh, many rules uh, clear. Another story, syntax for syntax. Let's take a look uh, on this example. And there is just a border property uh, with some value. And you don't think about uh, value like a uh, monolith. You think that uh, any component of this uh, means something. For example, one pixel uh, means border width, uh, and red is a color for border. And let's. Uh, uh, I want to, to ask you. Um, I want to ask you a few questions. For example, uh, there is an ex uh, example of CSS, and looks like uh, some colors used in it. So, how many colors here? Keywords. Four, two, one. You know it as now. <laughs> Five. Uh, okay, uh, actually, no one. Because uh, first guy is just a, a component of a family name, uh, Ariel Black. The second one is the animation name. Uh, whatever is unknown property, it's not defined by any spec, and so on. So, even experienced developers make uh, mistakes in such cases. But what about this one? So this is uh, uh, several examples of uh, animation value. And where is animation name here? Um, give up. <laughs> uh, it's a very hard question, and even for me, because uh, animation has very difficult syntax. Uh, and let's talk about value components. So any uh, value can, uh, can contain. Uh, several uh, components and also quite difficult syntax. So, in, uh, you can find in any spec definition for every uh, property that we use in CSS. So, it's a table for border, uh, and you can see on second row uh, the definition of this syntax. And it's quite different syntax for defining CSS syntax. This syntax is quite, uh, is, it's like a regex, but uh, a little bit different, and defined by this spec, CSS values and units. Uh, and also, uh, uh, the tool, which I am, I'm working on this tool, working on, uh, can work with this syntax. And what we get if we can work with, with such syntaxes? So, use cases. Uh, we, we can learn more about syntaxes. We, ca we can fetch uh, the meaning of the any component of the value. And uh, we can validate CSS. We can, uh, we, we can do smart search in CSS and so on. So let's take a clo clo closer look on some parts. 
I have made uh, a little research about real CSS on uh, most popular sites. And what I found that most of, uh, of sites have some kind of errors in its, in, in its CSS, even well crafted. So this is just a uh, uh, few sites, it's uh, 250 sites, and just 13 of it have no errors. So you can try uh, yourself, uh, try <laughs> check your uh, CSS with this uh, tool online, and probably you'll find some errors in, on your CSS. Also, also, you can use some plugins for uh, uh, text editors like Atom, with, uh, Visual Studio Code, and so on. And you also use for uh, tools like StyleLint. Uh, moreover, uh, I made a tool to discover CSS syntaxes. So it's uh, like a dictionary when you can choose any property and look at it uh, on its uh, definition. Also, you can see uh, how, uh, what meaning of every component uh, of some value. For example, this uh, value for a background property, and now you can see that 100% is percentages, length percentages, big position, and so on. And also you can trace it, so it, now you understand, uh, you can understand that uh, such value, uh, a component of what, uh, of what definition, of which definition. And you remember the quiz question about a mention name, color, and so on, uh, but you may don't know about the properties where it, it can be used, and just use some API to get all the colors in your CSS or all the family names, all fonts, and so on. So using this syntax, we can uh, do much more. A quick summary. Uh, CSS have, uh, it's a, have special syntax to define its syntax. So it's uh, uh, quite unusual for languages. And uh, Check your CSS. It might have some errors in it. And also, you should learn uh, CSS internals to understand how it works and why some rules are exist. exist. Uh, another chapter, chapter two. Altering the CSS syntax. And here is a quick question to you. Do you like CSS syntax? Cool, like, whoa, cool. <laughs> it's not, it's a little unfair after the first part, but I, um, I think it's okay. But many developers, about uh, many developers, want to change CSS syntax. But big problem here, they want to do it without understanding it. So the next story about redundant things. So. Some developers say, let's remove all those things, uh, braces, colons, and semicolons. They are not needed for us. So uh, how it look like? Uh, on this slide, on the left side, is a regular CSS, and the right side, a few examples for cells and stylus. But you should know that uh, about error handling in CSS. The specs say, uh, uh, states, that when error occur uh, in CSS, the parser should attempt to recover uh, gracefully, throwing away just a minimal amount of bad content. Because usually errors in CSS are not a mistake. Uh, maybe it's a part of uh, a new syntax that our parser don't understand uh, currently. So in short, uh, CSS parsers or, uh, or browsers uh, should be tolerant to errors. And this makes some things uh, possible. We, uh, you should common with this, uh, like keeping styles work even with some errors, uh, addressing uh, styles for some specific browsers. Uh, and also, it's more important for future specs, uh, introducing new features to CSS without uh, break all sites. 
For example, if we look at this example, <laughs> sorry, uh, the first guy, first line, uh, is not a normal uh, declaration. So any browser, any parser, uh, just throw it away. And the second one is also uh, incorrect for browsers that doesn't so support uh, custom properties, because before introduction of custom properties, double dash uh, was prohibited in the beginning of uh, identifier. Uh, and another quiz question to you. How do you think it's uh, correct CSS? It looks like a mess of characters, uh, looks like uh, a bit crazy, yep. But it's correct, uh, because something around correct parts, maybe it's a part of future syntax, maybe it's CSS 10. So we can uh, follow, follow uh, the rules of uh, CSS syntax. We can extract uh, CSS that you can see on the uh, bottom side. Uh, and actually, I discovered a new way to obfuscate CSS. But uh, it's not true because uh, it's quite easy to crack, to crack because uh, some tools like CSS3 and browsers can easily handle it. And when you write some CSS, you can understand that some part are addressed for some browsers. But actually, browsers that, that don't understand some parts look at this like the same. So it's uh, just a mess of characters uh, and have no meaning. And thank you for semicolons and uh, curly, uh, curly braces. Uh, we can safely remove all bad content from our CSS. Uh, <coughs> more uh, curly braces and colons and semicolons exclude ambiguity in understanding um, the meaning of our CSS. So. In, in summary, uh, most things are quite important. So colons, semicolons, it's very important things for uh, CSS. Uh, and CSS syntax design um, excludes ambiguity. And actually, any tool that works with CSS should be tolerant for errors in it. Another story, the last one. Nested rule. Uh, nested style rules. So uh, this rule, uh, rule nesting, is uh, most required requested feature in CSS and most used in preprocessors. Who are not familiar with this? This, uh, this is example. On the left side is a regular uh, regular uh, CSS, and the on, on and on right side you can see how it looks in preprocessor. Uh, so we just put some uh, rules inside and other rules, and uh, we exclude uh, repeating of se uh, selectors. Also, a few years ago, uh, CSS nesting model level 3 was introduced, but it was refused. Uh, and uh, just two weeks ago, a new discussion uh, was started. Uh, maybe we need uh, to, uh, to, to introduce it uh, to browsers. So what's the difference uh, between spec and preprocessors? Well, uh, in preprocessors, uh, we can use, and in, by the spec, we can use a new uh, selector, call it uh, ampersand selector. But in case uh, of preprocessors, it's optional, but it's very required uh, for proposed spec. And it also should be included in any uh, composite, se uh, composite <coughs> selector, compound selector. So that's the difference. It uh, looks like not uh, a big deal, but it's not true. You should uh, know that design of CSS syntax excludes any ambiguity in it. And also, uh, it designed it in such a way that uh, it's very good for simple and performant parsers. And actually, parsers need to check just a single token to decide which object we, uh, it uh, <coughs> But which we object to build. For example, if we met uh, something uh, other than at keyword, we start a rule. If we uh, found uh, brace token, we start a block, and so on. Uh, 
And if you look at uh, parsing rules on block level, it's quite simple. It's just uh, white space we ignore it, and uh, anything else we uh, start consuming a declaration. So let's imagine that uh, nested rules became allowed in another rules, and uh, we get um, uh, oops. And uh, we uh, take rules from preprocessors. So in this case, uh, parsing rules become too complicated because if something not uh, uh, something bad for rule, we consume a declaration, and if something bad for declaration, we start consume a rule, and that's why it's uh, not good idea uh, because of unbound look ahead. Uh, quite different error handling and many, many open questions. So look closer, take a closer look at unbounded look ahead. What is it? So just imagine we stay on this point and we need to decide what we should, uh, should uh, consume, a declaration or a rule. So we find a then token is uh, valid for both cases, so we go forward found colon, it's also valid for both cases. It's not clear uh, what we should to consume. And following, and following. So we check already several tokens, and we still don't know, uh, it's a, is it a declaration or is it a rule? It, and uh, this calling uh, about look ahead. So browser don't know how many tokens it should to check. Uh, it should check to, uh, to decide uh, is it declaration or rule. And it's very bad for performance. Another uh, thing is uh, error handling. So if we find some bad character in our CSS, and we, we should know what we can summon. So maybe it's a broken declaration, and maybe it's a broken rule. Uh, it's, and this is uh, very Mm, very important question because uh, declaration and rule consumption uh, have different rules to recover uh, parser to parse as normal. So it's quite difficult to read, but uh, actually when error in declaration uh, found, we seek forward until we find a semicolon uh, or closing brace. Uh, and if we consume a rule, uh, we uh, seek forward uh, until we find open brace, uh, and then we consume a block. Uh, or a block uh, ending is also uh, the end of scanning. So in practice, it looks like that. So if we decide that uh, we can summon a declaration, so uh, highlighted content will be thrown away. But the, uh, another amount of content will be thrown away if we decide that this is a rule. The same uh, thing, but there is another case, but the same uh, thing, uh, we remove different amount of content in each case. And maybe you remember this hack. Who, who remember? Uh, mo most of you. So, uh, Many years ago, we used uh, star uh, or asterisk um, before property name to address the style only for IE7 and below. So uh, modern browsers will throw in away just this declaration. But if we, uh, um, if we implement uh, nesting rules in uh, browsers, so it might be happen like this one. So instead of single um, single declaration, we can re uh, throw in away much more content because uh, star maybe is a, a start for for a rule because it's a universal selector. So we can summon a, se a selector. We can summon a rule uh, and use uh, recovering rules for a rule. So uh, <coughs> restrictions in proposed spec are reasonable because it makes many things uh, simpler. For example, you may remember that we uh, have unclear rules to, uh, for uh, parsing a block. Uh, and in this case, we add just single change in our, uh, 
in our parsing uh, parser. Uh, if uh, something in the inside the block starts with ampersand, we consume a, a rule. And anything else is we consume a declaration. So actually, uh, nesting rules is not uh, just about syntax sugar. It's a uh, more complicated thing. And you may uh, ask me uh, why it works for preprocessors and bad for browsers. Well, actually, preprocessors are not tolerant to errors. It falls on first one. Uh, it's not processing in runtime. Um, it's not uh, have no connections with any browser subsystems. And if you look at browsers, we have many, many open questions. Uh, how we need to uh, calculate specificity of selectors? Um, what we do with our uh, with all browsers? Uh, can we use uh, nested, nested rules inside a style attribute and so on? So it's uh, not so good for browsers right now, and uh, the win is unclear here. And summary: uh, once again, everything uh, happens for a reason, and this uh, syntax design uh, excludes ambiguity uh, and uh, for and very good for uh, parsers to be simple and performant. And we need to think twice before altering CSS because it uh, has influence on many, many, many parts of, of browsers. That's all, conclusion. Uh, and what do you think about CSS syntax now? It's an open question, actually. Uh, from my standpoint, CSS syntax is pretty well designed. Uh, and it's very beauty. Uh, learn more about CSS, and you would like it. So thank you. That's well done, Roman. We have a couple of minutes if you can join me. Oh, my. Seven God. seconds to be specific, <laughs> uh, or so. Um, just before, because we need to replace laptops anyway. Okay. Uh, so. CSS, huh? Yep. <laughs> yeah. So it's, uh, it's interesting because once you see all these tokens, you start looking into CSS slightly differently. Uh, so it's sort of kind of getting and get that you get to understand why it takes so much time to actually implement things. For example, a common problem that uh, was discussed a, a long, uh, like a lot for, for years now, is element media queries or element queries or container queries or whatever <laughs> you want to call them. Uh, why are they difficult to implement in CSS? Because uh, it has influence on many, many parts of browsers. So uh, on performance of it, on parsing, on developer tools, and so on. And we need to uh, think more about how we need to uh, put it together with other, the rest uh, browser subsystems. So, so it's quite difficult. And, and as you can see, it changed many things. Uh, and uh, the mistake in design uh, may be very mm, may lead to many many problems. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, also if we look into, however, if we look into the state of things and how things evolved over the last few years, we had so much stuff happening around Flexbox where the syntax changed and all this stuff. However, it seemed to be a bit more fluid in a way or smooth with grid layout. It seemed to be also quite fluid with custom properties. So should we be expecting a slightly faster pace of iteration from now on in CSS? Um, or is it, it just luck in a way? It's a hard question because uh, yeah, we, we need uh, more power in our CSS, I guess. But uh, we, uh, we need to know that uh, if we add something, we can remove it in future. Yes. So once again, the mistake is very uh, expensive. So we need to uh, think twice and try different, uh, different cases uh, and resolve all the problems. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe uh, things like uh, Houdini uh, may help to implement more uh, features in CSS. I guess it's the uh, right way because it's optional. You can add some uh, extra yeah. features to your CSS without influence on all the web. So maybe Houdini is a good choice in yeah. future. 
Okay. Um, and also just specifically, if you look into the future, what are some of the interesting specifications that you are looking forward to that might be important or worth paying attention to? So um, I really like uh, custom properties spec and how it was implemented because it's, it uh, doesn't break everything. And uh, the next uh, spec is also about custom properties, uh, but it uh, should um, allow us to define a, a syntax for custom properties. So, so on our own, so our custom Custom syntax for yep, custom yep. properties. So uh, I shown the, I showed uh, a syntax for a syntax. So we can use such syntax to define the meaning of our properties. Right. So why it important? Uh, because now uh, we can animate properties that uh, uh, have var substitution, because browser don't understand what it meaning. By, but if we can define the syntax of our custom property, we can validate it. It's also a plus. And uh, browser can handle uh, a values, uh, can handle values and uh, animate it properly. It's very good. OK. Um, there is a very personal question I have to ask you, and that's the last one. OK. <laughs> it's very personal. Uh, I have to, maybe you know, who came with the idea that it was important to include bang important in CSS? Uh, <laughs> I have no idea. No, it was really interesting because I think it's one of the, uh, the few exceptions in CSS where um, essentially it's like uh, whatever is done previously, kill it and do this. This is kind of a way of doing things, right? Um, I'm just really curious about uh, how it came to be. I would love to see, to hear that story. I have but no answer for this question. <laughs> it would be interesting to have a talk about what you can do with important. Can you, I mean, with important? That's probably, yeah, it's not much actually. Uh, it's just all writings. Well, uh, some ideas, it's not good uh, today, but uh, we should uh, remember uh, that uh, CSS. Uh, was introduced in 1996 and yes. uh, and important was here. <laughs> yes, because I remember one talk when somebody spoke for 55 minutes about how you can turn no script tag into a grid layout, con grid container, and then style nested things inside of no script using Flexbox. We should not go there. But we will maybe in the, in the party tonight. So thank you so much, Roman, for giving us thank the insight. You. Well done.